ideas, whatever. Um, th their job is to want to hear you out. So, so remember that. It's not as if you need to convince them about that. Our job is to find ideas and to make it and, and find the next big idea. Because at some point, like with me, I have my own ideas. I, 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 I do my own stuff. But then every now and again, when someone convinces me of a really cool idea, I go, oh, I want to produce this. I really like this. I, I'm, I feel as passionate about your idea as I do about my own. So, so, so that's, that's what, what you need to remember. I'm a year, and whoever is the me, to year your idea. But before I'm even interested in your idea, you're not just pitching your idea, and this is what's so important to me. You are also pitching you. So if you're going to come in with an attitude and be an asshole about it and think you, that you, you've got the job before you've even had a conversation, that's never a good idea. I'm not saying you will. Um, or over-eager beaver or fumbling and all over the place. And Because, of course, this, you might be nervous. But, but just remember, I'm interested in you as the individual as the creative who I need to go into a relationship with. I always say it's a marriage. And we all know there's good marriages and there's bad marriages. And I just want good marriages. Good marriages with, with our moments. In good marriages, there's lots of fights. There's lots of, you know, um, days where it's, where it's not always in alignment and going well. But when you love someone, you work through it. It's no different when we make stuff because it is the hardest industry there is and one of the most rewarding, make no mistake. So when I listen to your pitch, you are also pitching yourself. And hey, maybe it's your first ever pitch and I will never judge you for that because it's also about honing talent finding young filmmakers, who's going to be the next big filmmakers. You know, everyone starts somewhere. Steven Spielberg didn't wake up and direct E.T. It's just not how it worked for him. But sometimes it feels like that's how it works for people. They just, they just show up and make stuff. I can assure you that's not how it works. My, one of my favorite quotes is Oprah Winfrey said that her overnight success took 25 years. I think mine's even longer. And we're not, we're, not, we're not talking overnight success yet either. There is no such thing. Because let's say you do have a success. Let's say you pitch that idea and it's awesome and you're the next big thing and that year you win all the awards. Well, high five to you, guess what? Now you need to do it again and now you've got that behind you. So you, you, you need to go from there. And sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. And sometimes, you know, there's so many things that also governs a good idea. So let's say... It's, we, we hit it off. You come pitch to me. I am so smitten. I'm like, I, I want to marry you with this relationship telepathically, creatively, and we're going to do this together. And we make an awesome film together. I produce it. You direct it. Um, we had awesome production. No one broke anything. It was just fantastic. The film comes out on the other side. It's looking really good. And the film is about... Example, let's say, let's say um, the film is about, oh, well, whatever, the film's about something. And on the day that the film goes live, Putin decides to bomb another country, an even bigger country, and kill even more innocent people. And we're like, Deet! this was supposed to be our movie. No, no one's interested. Because this thing has happened in the world and it's changed the tra tra uh, trajectory of everything. So what I want to talk about is timing. Sometimes you have the best idea and the best end result, but the timing just wasn't there. Or sometimes you have the best idea, but the timing for the idea is just not right. And I'm going to give you a first-hand example of that. Because in my naivety at the time, I decided that the first project I'm going to go to the marketplace with, you know, as one does when you're me, is a story about a woman who said she, she had all the scientific knowledge in the 70s, incredible stuff. She was a meteorologist herself, which is pretty cool. Remember, we're talking about 70s, very little women's rights in comparison to now. And she got flown all over the world to present these findings. 
and and then she even got flown to a place called Wiesbaden in Germany where 22 of the world's greatest mind, minds gathered to hear the story, these findings, these things. How can a woman, of all things, let's just not forget, know what she knows? So she does a presentation. Everyone's like, wow. But you see, it's every time when they ask her, but how do you know this? And she very calmly and firmly said to them, it's because my alien lover from another planet took me in his spaceship to go show me that she lost most of the people in the room, mm. as you can imagine, right? So I decide, ha, huh, that's going to be my first project because I think it's super cool, and I'm going to present it as a documentary, in other words, non-fiction. I'm going to present this woman's story as non-fiction. Okay, so wish me well with that because that was 2010, and we are now... In 2022, as you know, and we're going to finally finish that film. Because now, channels, streamers, Amazons, Netflix, um, versus SABC, ETV, and Mnet at the time in 2010, this, the, the, the audience have evolved. The people are curious, and we spoiled. Uh, audience do not put up with crap TV anymore. They want to see cool stuff. So suddenly, 12 years later, can we just take a moment for that pain? I'm finally going to finish this film. Mm -hmm. And I made other films in between that time, which at that time I was never going to do because of timing. So you hold on to every single last idea you have because you might come talk to me about your amazing idea about your cat. And I'm going to say to you, I'm so sorry. I have four cat projects already. And I see that on Netflix, they just launched that and that cat movie. What else do you have? And instead of then going, oh, uh, 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 that's not how I had a plan in my head, you go, oh, no problem. I also have. Boom, 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 boom. Because look at me, 2010. 2022, and, but I had other ideas. So every time I got into the room with someone or at a festival or however we find these people, I, I was always ready with a plan B and a plan C because that's just how life works. If I, I got in my car today, I, I was so late and then it all worked out very, very well. Can I just say, when I got the SMS saying, oops, we're running behind and I'm like, because there was a whole blockage on the N1. Like they stopped cars, we had to reroute, la, 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 la. Because, of course, I do come from, you need a passport where I live. It's very far for, for most people. But I quite like it. Um, but the point is, do you see what I'm saying? Like, and maybe at the time you only have one good idea. But you've got to be so ready. Because the fact that you got into the room is one of the hardest things. It's not easy getting in the room. We sometimes spend years to do that because it's timing, it's who you know, it's, it's luck, it's availability. It's because this is the other thing. So I, I have my own production company, I do my own stuff. And then, and it's hectic and it's full on. And I'm a mum, and you know what that means, of small kids. And there's a lot going on. There's life, there's company, there's this, there's that. So I only have so much time. And remember that when I, or when I say I, I'm, I'm, I'm the metaphor for um, producers or commissioning editors, the people you pitch to, okay? So it's not I, Uga, it's I, the person you're gonna pitch to. If I give you my time, I have given you the biggest gift there is because I only have so much time. So respect it. Do you see what I'm saying? Don't come in and, and want a whole day with me. Come in, structured, you've planned it, you know what you want to say, and you need to know your idea so well that if I, had to wake up, if I had to wake you up in the middle of the night and ask you three questions about it, you will look at me and go, this is my answer, this is my answer, this is my answer. You can't go figure it out when you get in the room. When you're in the room, you're ready. You're ready to start tomorrow. You're ready to leave the room and start. You're ready to start yesterday not figuring things out. If you're still figuring things out, which is a very important part of it, don't get me wrong, 
then you're not ready for the room metaphor. You see what I'm saying? And that's what I needed to get off my chest. <laughs> well, that's been very well received. Um, you're talking about a pitch, but if you are now <clears throat> going to expect a pitch, what do you expect from someone that comes in and delivers a pitch? Are you expecting a PowerPoint presentation? Are you expecting a monologue? What are you expecting? What is a pitch? That's a very good question. And actually, I'm going to come in with a, in, a, a, inter, a little um, a, entry thingy and then, yeah. Um, it's very important to know who you're pitching to, okay? So if you go Google, you Google your person, you're going to go talk to. It's not just, let's say you go talk to Karin Meiring from CakeNet. It's not just CakeNet you need to Google to know what does the channel stand for, what do they do. You need to know who Karin Meiring is. You need to go, go stalk her. That's why social media is interesting, because make no mistake, I'll go bloody look you up, because I want to know if you like your cat. I want to know if you care about the environment, because I do. And if you don't, we already, the marriage is already a bit wonky. Do you see what I'm saying? So careful with your social media. Make sure it is an authentic representation of who you are. We all use it actually for everything but what it's there for. You know what I mean? So, um, and it's a very handy tool to understand, to get to get a little, to, to get to know you a little bit before we even get to chat. So go look at who you're talking to. Who are they, and what do they stand for? Because if you're going to come pitch me your sports program about Joost van der Westeisen, I, I, I'm just going to look at you blankly and go, I just gave you my time, and you just wasted it. Because I don't do that. I don't do rugby. Unless you bring me a really cool, actually I actually have a rugby comedy, so what am I saying? But it's, uh, uh, we're reworking it a little bit and there's a female-driven heroine. But do you see what I'm saying? Because that's what my company do. We do female-driven heroine stories. But every now and again, there's an exception to the rule. Um, and I take projects on that doesn't necessarily have a female-driven heroine because I'm the female driving it, so I'm the female-driven heroine. Do you see what I'm saying? So if I, like the, if, I, if I like the project, I sort of find angles to go, I oh, know I can make this fit in my, for what I stand for. So, you know, so, but I'm just saying, don't pitch me um, the cricket Sri Lanka tour because I'm not super sport. That's what you pitch to super sport. So that's what I'm trying to say. But to answer your question, um, what is a pitch? I do not have time for your PowerPoint pre presentation because you could have emailed that to me, you see. So, no. Um, that would be something you could follow up with because remember, you get the meeting, you get in the room, the, your work is not done because guess what? There's 50 other people that got in the room with me plus life, plus Mr. T that needs to go for a walk, plus grade one and grade two, plus the pool pump the other day bursting and going straight into my motherboard box. You know, there's all of that too. So you've had your meeting with me, high five. But now how are you going to close that meeting? Because when you leave, you need to remind me that I really liked you and your project. And that's where the PowerPoint can come in. Make sure it's creative and super cool because we're not working at Old Mutual. We're creatives. I don't want 25 slides. The more compact it is, like a little commercial, everything you do is a little commercial to get you to the point where you can do the, the, the long version. Like a PowerPoint of 25 pages, I, I'm actually, uh, you become so hectic, you just sort of like, oh. I'm gonna look at the PowerPoint, that's five pages. And that's cool, and that's got these things happening. And maybe I'll remember about the 25-pager. Because again, respectful of people's time. Think in commercials when you in the room, when you do follow-ups, until you got me hooked. Because then I'm going to say to you, I'd like to see the script. I'd like to see your treatment. Come visit me again. I have questions. Let's get on a Zoom. So it's always about getting the follow-up meeting. Or, you know, so that it doesn't just die there. So when you pitch, it's, remember what I said, it's you I'm interested in. So I want to see you. I want to hear you. I want to hear your voice, your mind, how you see things. I, I want to I get a sense of you. 
And you might maybe then when you go, give me a little brochure. Always very, very handy to do that because a brochure is for me much, now, and this is now a personal thing. To some people is now going to say, don't kill a tree. But for me, a brochure is lacquer because I can, I can put it in my bag and when I have a moment at a traffic light, I will pull it out and look at it because that's how hectic my time is. Then you're going to also email me and go, hey, thank you so much for today. Really appreciate your time. Just to summarize, and here is my, my visual. Standing by for any questions. Your own way, your own words. But do you see that you just forever have something to give me that's new, that's unique. You're not going to regurgitate stuff. You're going to have an entire plan of cool things because you are courting me with your idea. It's no different to your girlfriend and your boyfriend. It's just now business because you want me to choose you. And remember, we can only do so much. Like, there, there is only so much you can do. There's only so much time in a day. And make sure you don't burn out because we tend to do that all the time because we just get so involved, we're creatives. So you see what I'm saying? So a PowerPoint is not a bad idea, but a PowerPoint is a follow-up. Um, in boardroom scenarios, I mean, I know a lot of my friends love to whip that computer out, but you know what happens. And, and like, that just, that, like, I feel the anxiety talking about this. Now your damn PowerPoint's not working. And I'm sitting there going, <clears throat> so now we've lost 10 minutes because the presentation, you know how this goes. It's going to always screw with you when you least need it. And because you're in the room for the first time, do as much as you can so that no one and nothing can steal your thunder. So if you have visuals, like you've printed out, no one can screw with you unless a tsunami comes and washes through the window. And okay, but then we're all dead anyway. But you see what I'm saying? Like, like we can sort of, you can work with that. But a PowerPoint and computer and technology, because you can email me all of that. First win me over. First convince me, why do I need to take a chance on you? And your really awesome idea, because they go hand in hand. And that's why, why um, skill, the, like the, the gift of the gap, is, is a very important one. Because you're going to sell me with your mouth first. You're going to sell me with what comes out of your mind. And then you're going to give me a brochure, you're going to give me this, you're going to give me that. Do I answer your question? Did I? You do, but I'm going to put you on the spot. Would that be OK if I put you on the spot? <laughs> Please. Can we ask you to pitch an idea to us, how you would go into a room and pitch a movie idea? Me? Right now? Yeah. Oh, sure. <laughs> I've become really so, like, well-versed in this. Doesn't always mean it, it, it um... Well, and I'll, I'll use another real-life example. So I'll be you, and then you can be the one that pitches. All right, Ms. Uh, Carolini, you're here. You've got my time. What am I listening to? In 1999, Someone gave me a book called I Have Life, um, ghostwritten by Marianne Tam for Alison Boeta, who is a rape survivor and who was the first South African woman to publicly say, I was raped and it was my fault. And it's not that she was raped, another rape story from South Africa, because I've heard people say that and that makes me really angry. But she was a girl next door that if I had to line girls up and say to you, one of these women, one of these girls, survived being repeatedly raped, having her neck slashed 17 times, having her stomach stabbed over 35 times, disemboweled, left in a nature reserve to die, and then crawled 90 meters, where one miracle after the other found her so that she could become the person she is today. That is for me what I'm interested in. Because when I read the book, and I then went and heard her speak for the first time at the old rugby field of my school, uh, DF Milan High School in Belleville, and I arrived, because it was supposed to be in the hall, and so many people showed up that they moved them to the rugby fields, and there I sat with Um Kali, with his khaki outfit on, and Tani Sunny, and some funky people, cool people, rugby people, all the people of the world. And Alison was so far away, she was a dot. And I looked at the people 
and how she commanded us by just being her, then I was like, well, I, I want to tell this story because what I'm seeing is what I want to share because that's what she did for me. And that's the movie I want to make. Wow. Okay. So I think we've got a good idea. So it is going into the room, commanding the room, telling the story and why you want to tell a story and why it's going to make such an impact. Is that about it? Yes. And the thing is, I made it personal. Because at that time, everyone knew the story of Alison. I mean, there's still a lot of people who know the story of Alison. But it's personal for me. Because I, th th what I saw on that rugby field that day, and, and the thing I now didn't say, if you, if you look, if I said, one of these girls survived this, Alison will be the last one you would think. She didn't know what she wanted to do with her life. She was sort of floating here and there. She wasn't good at sports. She's not into martial arts. She doesn't really swear. Um, she's just nice. She's just lovely. She shouldn't have survived that because girls like that don't survive. She did. And she changed a lot of people's lives because she did. Sure. So that's the, that was the original pitch. That was the, the monologue. So you'd <laughs> follow that up with, um, what would you uh -huh. follow that up with? Okay. So now, so now you get one of two reactions. You go, oh, slash, bleh, bleh. I mean, I had really mean people. And then you get the person who goes, okay. Um, well, send me what you have and let me speak to my team. Um, or how far are you down the road? What have you done? And then I go, of course, because remember, you don't take the meeting unless you're ready. Oh, I've shot a promo um, that I would love to send through to you. And of course, my, my, my director's treatment. Um, and we've got, a, we've got a small business plan for you to look at as well. And, I'll, and I will already be like, hmm. This person has taken the time to figure this out. This person and I are going to go a long way. And the other thing that we haven't touched on, I'm going to then say to you, say, because I want to test you to see if you open to input, because this is the other thing. You can have an awesome idea, you can be well prepped, but if you're not going to allow me to come in with input and assist you to bring your vision to life, then what's the point going to be? So if you become harachat and, yeah, no, it's just, it's just how you handle it. Because you're going to have your non-negotiables, and I'm going to want to know that. But I also want to see, can we, can we bounce ideas off each other? Because remember, what we do, and there is no I, and not the I on the back of my jersey, I as in I, Eka, me, you, in filmmaking. There isn't. It is such a collaboration. It's that one note someone gives you when there's an edit that changes the trajectory of the film. Or that one, one with scripts, I love that always. Your, your buddy who reads it and he just says one thing that elevates the scene into a next. That's collaboration. And we, are, we fail without it as creatives. The, the post-production uh, process, you've got your online editor, the, uh, your offline editor, then you've got your online editor, then you've got your colorist, your composer, your, your sound designer, the guy that needs to create what kind of footsteps does a nurse have, did Alison have, what did crawling through sticks sound like. It's such an incredible, beautiful process. But you need to be open to all of that. Because every single person has their one little golden nugget. And they believe in your story as much as you do. Once we commit, it's because we love it. I'm now working on a movie. We, we're going to come together from all over the world at the end of the year. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know who's going to look after my kids. I'll deal with it when the time comes. And we're going to shoot it and we're not getting paid in New York or in Pennsylvania. And the point that I'm trying to make is because we believe so much in the filmmaker that I am willing to not even, to, I, I'll, get, I'll get on board if I believe in you. And do you know how many people have done that for me? And those are the people who give me my wings. Because at the beginning, it, it, it was very different when I started out. We, we don't have the support that, that's out there for young filmmakers now. There's the, the multi-choice talent campus. I just saw you should all be looking at that. 
um, the National Film and Video Foundation wanting youth. Where's our youth? Let's own them. There's, there's so much for all of you. It's, I'm very excited. But the point that I'm trying to make, if we believe in each other's work, that's what gives us wings, and that's how we get things done. And I will get on board, and we'll find the money, and we'll figure it out, but it's the belief that's necessary. And bearing in mind that it is show business, so we will find a way for the initial give to be repaid. Because maybe, maybe we won't get paid on Project A, but Project A will open the door to Project B, or a group of really cool people got together, and now I've found my tribe, and I'm gonna work again and again and again with them because the money will come. Trust me, like now, the Alien Project. We did that for free. Like, we made all the mistakes, putting your own money in, using credit cards, everything they tell you you should never do. How else do you do it if no one's giving you the money? It was just never supposed to take 12 years. So there's like, it's like, but here we are. We're waiting for our offers. All going well, we're gonna shoot this July and August. Do you see what I'm saying? How do you test whether someone is open for collaboration or for, um, for input of ideas? Because you said that's what you would do next. So how would, you, how would you approach that? I mean, it's not necessarily in that order, but you will find, I'll ask questions. Because remember, you've now sent me your, your deck. It's called it, we call it a deck. Um, or you send me your idea, or you send me whatever. We've had, a, we've, we've had, we've had our meeting, you send me follow up, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the next meeting, because that is the aim. The aim is to get the next meeting. And I'm gonna say to you, I've got some questions for you, or, I, I'm, I, or I'm unclear about some things. And the moment someone says that, I remember in the early days, I became quite like, you unclear about something, how? Whereas those are just terms to say, I really like what you're doing, and I wanna know more. And when they start asking you these questions, it gets your mind going as well. So, it, and, and I mean, listen, this is my process, and, and everyone is different, so let's not forget that. But, um, I mean, you know, I'm a producer, but I'm also a director, and I know with the, the, the incredible producers I work with, do that to me all the time. But, okay, but, but I don't understand this. And instead of going, but how can you not understand this brilliant, awesome idea of mine when it is so clear in my head? Because that's the other thing. It's so clear in your head. If it's not clear to me, there's something still missing. And there lies the value. Because when it's clear, it's, it's, it's A, B, C. The alphabet goes from A to Z. Boom. That's how it works. Uh, so you use the word deck. What exactly is in a deck? Okay, I mean, these are all words for the same thing. There's a deck, there's a pitch, there's a treatment, there's a PowerPoint, there's a keynote for those who have Apple. Um, I love my keynote. But keynote you can also save to PowerPoint. Mm. I only discovered recently. Um, or there's pages, or there's whatever, and then you PDF it, and boom, there's your. It's a it's a visual representation of um, your idea. Um, as far as I, when, what I'm listening to is, you have to be very, very clear on the idea before you go and pitch it. There must be no uncertainty. So must you have the entire idea, the entire script, the ideas for the actors, um, ideas for the production design, the where you want to film, the locations? Do you have to have all of that ready? It, dep it, it depends on what you are. Are you just a screenwriter that's got a really cool idea? Are you a director who's got someone else's script? Um, sure, I mean, I don't want to overcomplicate things because that's a very loaded question. But um, the production design and all of that comes further down the line. That falls under pre-production and planning. And, and, and also, if I'm going to give you the money, I'm going to have some say as to who we're going to put in here with you. Because if you knew, I want to surround you with the strongest possible people because you knew 
or it's your first time or whatever. Um, we, it's going to depend on availability. It's going to depend on budget. But the most important first step, so let's rather talk about first steps. What do you need to have? Are we talking about a feature form here? Because we also need to be specific as to what we're talking about. Well, I think most of these questions are, desi are designed for our learners who are making their own films. Okay. So, and they, have, they are now pitching it to a competition. Oh. Um, so, I think that's our first step. Okay, so that helps me a lot. Okay, and it's a short film or a full It's short? a short film. Ha. Okay, so, so when, when, and then you get money to make it. So, just give me the background. Yes, I think they're, they're, these are all specifically to our competition, so they're going to have to source their own money. So they need to they need to be chosen as a finalist. So it's, I think it's more about the idea. Okay, see, the, let's so the, so let's use. I, I always like real life examples. Okay, so you so you're going to need a lot of favors, in other words. Yeah. Um, okay. And make a lot of plans. Okay. You see, welcome to even having um, the money to make a film, because you're never going to have enough money. But I am personally out of favours with everyone I love now. So now when I'm like, oof, hi, and then they're like, no. <laughs> so so make sure you never run out of favours, but you're still young, so now you're going to just use all the favours you can get. Okay. So when you go and pitch your idea, you're going to have to be very clear on, on how you want to do this. And the clearer you are and the more you have, the more impressed I'm going to be. I, I'm so-and-so, this is my idea, this is what I want to make this film, and this is how I think I'm going to do it. Um, maybe you've got a friend, or maybe you've got an uncle or an aunt. There's some big production people in and around Stellenbosch, by the way, lots of them. I don't want to throw their names out there because then they might kill me. But go do a bit of homework, um, or maybe you, maybe, maybe there is, maybe you can, because what, what Australia does, that I have so much time for. I lived there for two years, um, and, 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 and I didn't really like it, but what I did like about it is how they, ho how they do what we do. So when you're at university level, and you have to make your first short student short film, that's maybe your final piece, they make you cast professional actors rather than each other, so that you, on, on, on a student level, get to work with Kate Blanchett. She does it all the time. She makes herself available to those final years um, at, Sid I think, the Sydney University. If I'm, don't quote me on this, but something like that. I know her and her husband are also big on the, on the Sydney theatre there. But that's the kind of give back that these people give their, their kids, so that you are, when you come in, you, 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 the people you're working with are people that's done it. Can you imagine what that gives you as in your bag of tools? So maybe, maybe you know someone who is, um, give me an actor you like. Come, give me one name of a local actress you like or actor. Someone needs to give me a name. Lacker, Rolanda Marie. Maybe someone here knows Rolanda Marie. Maybe someone can say to Rolanda, 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 forgive me. This is just a talk. I'm not saying do it, but maybe your maybe your mum and Rolanda are big mates, and Rolanda says, "I will, as a give back, you go pitch Rolanda. Please, do you want to be in my film? It's do we doing this? We're doing that. We're doing this. We're doing that." By the way, her husband's also a DOP. Just saying, but again, you said the name, um, and you, Rolanda says yes. I'd love to be involved because most of us want to give back. Most of us are honing, want to hone the talent. Every time I take a meeting, I learn something. I get inspired all over again. Sitting here talking to all, all of you, I'm like, ha, huh, you know, actually I'm going to I'm going to go home and I'm going to okay, deal with the kids, deal with, you know. And then I want to quickly do this, this and this and this that I just thought of now. It's, and they, there's that, that, that energy exchange, that collaboration. This is a collaboration. So, so, so what can you put in your pitch to elevate it? Why you and not me? You've got to, it's exhausting to do what we do because you've got to think strategic all the time. Um, there's so many skills that one needs except for being a creative. Because you can be the coolest creative in the world and have the most awesome idea. But if you can't execute it, 
if you're not organized. And hey, we all have our strengths and our weaknesses. So maybe, so my, my weakness, it's not a weakness, it's just lazy. I just cannot deal with scheduling and budgeting software. It makes me puke, okay? So I employ people who loves it, and I can sit there, brush my main coon, while I say, so let's talk about fuel. Let's, okay, may I put it in there, please. Do you see what I'm saying? Just because it's my weakness or my pet, it doesn't mean I can't do it. But then you get the help because it's all about using your strengths. This is not the place to take your weaknesses and make it better, no. That's other, maybe that works in other, this is about what's your strength, like full throttle, and then put people in places whose strengths are your weaknesses because it's collaboration. So when you do that pitch for the short film competition, put your strategic hat on, put your show business hat on as much as your cool idea hat, because you need both. And that is the bad news, petals. But it's also good news. And if you don't have both, you get that buddy of yours that's always got really practical solutions, and you say, please make a film with me, I could really use your A, B, C, D. Trust me, I do it all the time. I surround myself with people that are better than me, people that are more clever than me, people that are more awesome than me, because it just rubs off, and I love it. So what can you do that day, that day when you pitch, is there maybe something you can do to make it stand out? How much time do you have to pitch? Is, is there, a time, there must be a time allocation, or not even? Um, I think our pitches are between three and five minutes. Okay, I'm gonna give you a real life example of, of a cool pitching story thing. Well, well, not cool, just like actually it was frightening. Once a year in America, in, in um, 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 somewhere there, they have the American film market. It's one of the biggest gatherings for, for film. And, and they rent out this m massive building in, um, I think it's, oh, yeah, it's not totally left my head. But they rent out this, it's in Los Angeles, so this big building by the beach, and every room in this building is, 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 is a major person, universal. Um, uh, I mean, there in, in a lift with me, Nicole Kidman walked in. I mean, th that's the level of people, it's like Khan, it's like there's American full market. And they have a, they have a, a, a five day, once a day, um, sort of workshop seminar story. And, and every, every day deals with a subject. And I did that because it was, it was just incredible. Remember, we can never stop learning. Mm. I, I can never know everything. It's just too vast. And, and I never want to stop learning. And it was the produce, it was the pitching one. And, and everyone, as you walked into the room, and this, it's only, only a thousand people, then it's, and it was sold out within an hour, my friend still loaned me the money, Louise, bless Louise. I mean, that's where I was at at that point. That was now Alien Project days. And, um, and I did give her money back, just so you know. So I still have favors. Um, and everyone put their card in a hat, and they chose three cards, and then, there were these Hollywood execs, like with attitudes and business suits, sitting on chairs like that. And, and you then, if they picked your, your, your name, you had to get up in front of everyone and pitch. And you had one minute, and there was this massive clock. Okay, I mean, what's the chances? I'm very calm, because my, and they fucking pick, oh, they, they pick my name, okay? And I'm like, holy macaroni. Because I have two projects that I cannot choose between. I have Alison, and now I must now remember my good idea with a nonfiction about an alien. I'm going to pitch both. I'm going to take that clock, I'm going to divide it into two, I'm going to pitch both. And I did it. Okay? Okay. They ripped me to shreds. The first woman literally said, I cannot understand a word this woman has just said. So you've lost me. And I'm like, that is like I was so like, there were so many fights about my projects. The one person saying, oh, how, I don't want to hear about a woman whose guts were hanging out. Who cares? Oh, and then the other person who's like, a alien, what? Alien? She said, to, 
there was, and then this one started fighting with that one, and, and I was just standing there going, like this ping pong game going on between not people understanding me, la la la. It, it was such a dr little drama amongst whatever this was that it ma every day the trades, at, at all these festivals, they write about the previous day. It made the trades as to this woman with an accent, da 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 da. And because of the room and the kind of people there, because remember, these are all producers, people, filmmakers, to this day, I've made connections because of my pitch and how I was blatantly, like, I was ripped to shreds, like, on a level on, like, that I didn't know was out there. But what came out of it is filmmaking um, colleagues for life, um, do you see what I'm saying? Sometimes things go pear shape. Mm. But make sure that your name gets bloody taken out of the hat. What are you gonna do in that pitch thing of yours so that I do not forget you? What is it that you can do? Maybe it's a song you can play. Or maybe it's like, I don't know. I don't know, that's not for me. <laughs> you need to figure it out. But do you hear what I'm saying? There's, you just, and I just take everything and turn it into something. I, I go, okay, what was the reason behind this? Maybe it was like a waste of time and that was my lesson. Don't waste your time like that again or whatever. Just never go down. Tomorrow's another day. Sometimes we just need to go sleep it off. But it doesn't always go well. Trust me. Oh, my hat. It doesn't always go well. But it's okay. Go. We want to know if any questions... Any questions from someone from the floor who'd like to come up and ask Uga a question? <gasps> Best hair in the room. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask, let's say you have a film, but it's heavily character driven and uh, it's picked, your pitch goes through, but then when casting comes, you can't find the exact right uh, actor, so as a result, you need to change your script. How how do you go to the um, people who accepted your pitch and say, you know the original pitch? Yeah, it has to ch change now. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. As the director, it is your job to make it work. Because we can't always find the perfect person. Sometimes our budget doesn't allow it. Or the person's not available. Because dates change all the time. So maybe you can only shoot on the Saturday, but the person you wanted can only work the Sunday, but it has to happen on the Saturday. That's where directing comes in. There are no bad actors. That is the bad news. Or the good news, just depending on how you want to. But you can't go change the script. Because you were, you were, you were, you were yes on what you presented, and listen, don't get me wrong. Scripts change. The edit is still lying ahead, but 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 I can promise you that you will figure it out, because that's where the directing is going to come in. Does that break your heart or? <laughs> Uh, no, it's just an interesting question I had because one of my friends did that for a film competition and she had to change her entire script and they actually allowed it. So I was just curious, would it work in the actual film industry as well? No, because we the money is on the paper. That script gets broken up. That's how the budget gets done. That's how the schedule gets done. That's how everything gets done. But but scripts change all the time on set, or we decide we're gonna we're gonna do the script and then we're gonna also improvise a little bit. There's that. There is flexibility, but we, uh, this is and this is just my opinion. Um, there there is enough incredible people to work with, so that as the director you can you don't have to sacrifice your your what's on paper. If there aren't any other questions, oh, there is one. Come on. Would, uh, let's say you had an idea for a film or something. 
would a, someone who you're pitching to appreciate, let's say, if you wanted to go out and make a little bit of a trailer or a five-minute short film that conveyed the mood, style, and tone, mm -hmm. would someone in a pitch like, like that? Hell yeah. yeah. That's when you're really talking the film language. And, but keep it short. Like five minutes, way too long. Okay. Think commercial. Okay. Always think like a commercial for the initial. Because it's about getting the second meeting. Your first meeting is purely to get the second meeting. Like, and, and we often connect at festivals or, or events like this. Your mission is to make me like you so we can go second meeting. Third meeting, movie, life. Uga, thank you so much for your time. Thank, thank you for, you for your, um, for, thank you for being um, put on the spot and giving us a pitch. I think that was so impressive. And I'm hoping that um, everyone here learned something about making pitches and is inspired to do so.